another positive effect on total testosterone level by keeping their body weight levels lower, their aromatized enzyme expression is lower, there's less likely effect of testosterone converting into estradiol and thus serum testosterone levels stay higher. So everything that I tried to talk about here on this YouTube channel is now kind of forfeit. Um, all the micronutrients that I usually talk about, zinc, selenium, taurine, carnitine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Apparently, based on a study from 1994, maybe they didn't have as good of a selection of multivitamins, vitamins, minerals, et cetera. Um, apparently, it doesn't have any effect on your sex hormones or adrenal levels in serum. Um, so yeah, uh, take this study for what it is. Uh, if you want to have high DHEA, DHEA sulfate, testosterone, etc., cetera, um, smoking <laughs> seems to be the way to go. And of course, not getting yourself morbidly obese, that's certainly deleterious for your hormone levels. Moving on to another study from June 2001, performed by English et al. titled, Effects of Cigarette Smoking on Levels of Bioavailable Testosterone in Healthy Men. This study, a case control study of 25 healthy male smokers versus 25 healthy never smokers, so never even touched a cigarette in their younger years, succumbing to peer pressure. Trust me, I've been there. I used to smoke cigarettes during parties here and there, maybe once a month, once every couple of months um, to kind of take the edge off the other stuff that I was doing. Um, you know, let's just omit that from this video. Um, these uh, healthy male smokers and healthy never smokers were matched by age and again, body mass index. The levels of total and free testosterone were found to be higher in smokers compared to non-smokers, respectively, as was sex hormone binding globulin levels. There were no significant differences in the level of bioavailable testosterone or 17 beta estradiol levels between smokers and non-smokers. So maybe now, um, already this uh, story of uh, the potential for aromatized inhibition of nicotine, cotinine, or anabasine is kind of falling out of the water, right? Maybe only the scientific evidence has been proven in women under particular medical conditions, but we can do a deep dive. All you have to do is ask for it. Very interesting study. And again, you know, these clear changes in testosterone levels just gets repeated and repeated and repeated with the studies that I selected. Again, I omitted all the studies where it showed there was no changes in serum concentrations. Anyway, moving over to another study published in the September to December edition of Aging Men of 2005, performed by Ponholzer et al., titled Relationship Between Testosterone, Serum Levels, and Lifestyle in Aging Men. Here we go again. Of a total of 375 men between 45 to 85 years old, 25.4% had hypogonadal testosterone levels, so those are subclinical, below, what was it, 200-something nanograms per deciliter. Smokers had higher testosterone and free testosterone levels. So even though 25% uh, of the men in this study were hypogonadal, of all the smokers compared to the non-smokers, at least the smokers were winning and a little bit ahead in their serum concentrations. While body mass index, again, had a negative correlation with testosterone. Moving over to another study. I'm going to recite all the studies, guys, until you get sick of it. June 2002, a study performed by Trummer et al. titled The Impact of Cigarette Smoking on Human Semen Parameters and Hormones. This study took 1,104 men, of which were 517 non-smokers, 109 ex-smokers, so at least they threw in the towel already, and 478 currently smokers. So let's just split it right down the middle. About 500 people who used to dabble with that their anabolic tobacco and a little bit over 500 people who never dabbled, right? All had infertility for at least one year. They were all evaluated. Smokers were significantly younger, had increased free and total testosterone levels, but decreased Prolactin levels, does this mean that tobacco, nicotine, cotinine, anabasine, or some of the other metabolites found in cigarettes have some dopaminergic effects? Or does this mean the correlation between smokers and lower body mass index, that's the sole reason why their prolactin levels are lower? Or is, is it because the smokers are significantly younger, right? I mean, there's a positive correlation between body mass index and serum prolactin levels. The higher your body mass index is, Generally speaking, in a general population, the prolactin levels might be a little bit higher as well. Keep that in mind. Testosterone levels were significantly lower in those who were able to stop or reduce smoking. So the more cigarettes you smoke, allegedly, the higher serum testosterone levels are going to be. And some of the previous studies that I mentioned also proved this. 
If you want to know about how uh, smoking versus non-smoking affects your fertility levels, read this study. Very interesting results. Again, everything is down below in the description section. And this is actually confirmed in a study from June 2007 performed by Schwarzberg et al. titled Affiliations, Endogenous Testosterone Levels and Smoking in Men. This study took 3,427 men participating in the fifth Tromso study. Smoking men had significantly higher levels of total and free testosterone compared to men who had never smoked. Both total and free testosterone levels increased significantly with increasing numbers of cigarettes smoked daily. Interesting. Smoking men had 15% higher total and 13% higher free testosterone levels compared to men who never smoked. Thus, smoking seems to be an important compounding factor when evaluating testosterone levels and could possibly mask borderline hypogonadism. All of the TRT clinics out there, you know what you need to do. Instead of prescribing testosterone replacement therapy, all you need is one pack of Melboro. And all of these guys are out of their subclinical state. They're no longer hypogonadal. All you need to do is maybe go with, uh, you know, Galois from France. That's probably the most potent tobacco, the most flavorful tobacco that I used to smoke when I was younger during parties. Um, I would say that that's a tobacco replacement therapy instead of testosterone replacement therapy, going from hypogonadal states to within the reference range. <laughs> Dude, you don't even need a script for it because cigars, cigarettes, Tobacco in general is sold worldwide over the counter, albeit that prices have gone up quite steeply over the last couple of months. I know that I'm spending about two to three times or even four times as much for my Cuban cigars currently, right? So maybe testosterone replacement therapy, if you're going for daily administrations of uh, cigarettes versus testosterone, testosterone replacement therapy might be cheaper, but you have to get it on the script or source it on the gray area market, whereas Cigarettes, you can just buy anywhere. All you need to go is to the grocery store, drop a couple dollars, and you got your pack that should be able to increase your total testosterone concentrations quite the same. No, 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 that's not true. At least with testosterone replacement therapy, you can get out of the reference range. With cigarettes, good luck trying to get anywhere close to the top of the reference range from the studies that we analyzed previously. Anywhere between 9 to 15% increase is to be expected, I would say, for heavy smokers. Um, so if you want to go super physiological, TRT is the way to go, baby. And then the last study I want to highlight, finally, the last study, no more overlays. My editor is already having a nightmare about this video. This was published in Hormones, the October to December edition of 2013, performed by Wang et al. titled, Cigarette Smoking has a positive and independent effect on testosterone levels. They took the data of 2021 men 989 were non-smokers and 1,032 were smokers, aged 20 to 69, so men in the prime of their lives. Um, smokers had significant higher total testosterone and free testosterone levels, yet again, compared to non-smokers, even after stratification per age, body mass index, serum triglyceride levels, and alcohol consumption. So it's independent of, uh, again, age, body mass index, even though previous studies showed a correlation between body mass index testosterone levels and uh, smokers or non-smokers, right? So again, there's a little bit of overlap depending on which study you read. A body mass index might have a significant effect on serum testosterone levels or, and <laughs> smoking might have a significant effect also. Now, I will say this, and this is very important to emphasize, besides the correlation between smoking and testosterone or vice versa, higher testosterone levels leading to more likely outcome of smoking, it's the same for higher testosterone levels and a more likely outcome to get addicted to gambling or get addicted to sex or get addicted to recreational drugs or become sexually deviant, right? Higher testosterone levels can cause all kinds of issues. So maybe based on the data that we just researched and reviewed, I would say that it's not a correlation that smokers have higher testosterone levels. I think that higher testosterone level individuals are more likely to smoke, right? And because their body mass index is lower because nicotine is suppressing their appetites, another positive effect on total testosterone level by keeping their body weight levels lower, their aromatized enzyme expression is lower, there's less likely effect of testosterone converting into estradiol and thus serum testosterone levels stay higher. You can see that in a lot of scientific evidence where people stop smoking, where your testosterone levels are going down. I'll link all of those studies down below. 
And to further emphasize another study from October 1989, remember when I said I wasn't going to post any more studies? I lied. Performed by Bauman et al., testosterone and cigarette smoking in early adolescents, published in the Journal of Behavioral Medicine. In this study, salivary testosterone was positively associated with cigarette smoking among 201 subjects aged 12 to 14 years old. This is the prime time of your life when serum testosterone levels are sky high and you don't know what to do with it um, because it's a little bit too young to reproduce, albeit I know that there's some 14-year-olds out there that already um, right, punched their nookie cards. I mean, most guys would have to go on testosterone replacement therapy to get anywhere close to the total testosterone levels of these 12 to 14-year-olds. The finding suggests that testosterone should be included in future considerations of adolescent cigarette smoking. And I found something very interesting in the results of this study. If physical development is determinant of cigarette smoking, so the more of a stature you have at that age, it's probably more likely that you start smoking as well. Or maybe you're rolling with the older kids, they're all smoking, so you start smoking even though you're only 12 years old. Then the strength of the relationship between testosterone and smoking shown in table one could have been inappropriately reduced by the control for age. So again, irrespective of age, the more um, muscular, the taller, the more physical appearance these kids might have. If that leads to smoking more readily, maybe it has nothing to do with age. Maybe it has more to do with testosterone levels. We could conceptualize cigarette smoking as an indicator of the more general construct, social deviance. I mean, how many of us were socially deviant when we were 12 to 14 years old? maybe even leading up to 18 years old, right? We just don't do what our parents want to do or the teacher wants us to do or anybody else of society wants us to do because our testosterone levels are so high, we don't listen to anybody. I mean, how many people on TRT are very compliant? Like I mentioned, in the serum testosterone levels are declining um, since uh, the ancient man up until now. If testosterone has a causal influence on social deviance, <laughs> here we go. Then we should, and then we would have overcontrolled when adjusting for social deviance and examining the relationship between testosterone and cigarette smoking. These conceptual and analytical considerations suggest that our estimates in the association between testosterone and smoking could be conservative. Yeah, yeah, very, very interesting. I would like to see a study performed on a very a large selection of men. Um, seeing if their testosterone levels are higher, um, analyzing that versus whether they smoke or not, and then see what happens when they stop smoking, which again, many of the studies show that as soon as you stop smoking, the longer you stop smoking, the lower your testosterone levels are. Also because again, body mass index tend to go up when you stop smoking. So maybe a better comparison would be seeing where the total testosterone levels, free testosterone and all of the other hormone markers are in comparison to smoking or some of the appetite suppressants like liraglutide, dulaglutide, semiglutide, terzepidide, and that new compound that is coming out in a couple months, which is going to agonize the GLP-1, the GIP, and the glucagon receptor. So that experiment that I did with terzepidide, combining terzepidide with glucagon, now is going to be combined into a single product. With these appetite suppressants, body mass index should be relatively low. And then I want to see if there's a correlation between total testosterone levels in these individuals as well, assuming that they start out healthily and not in a you know, pre-diabetic or full-blown type 2 diabetic state, which is ultimately what these medications are prescribed for. So again, this is a lot of scientific evidence that shows that uh, smoking, whether that is uh, cigarettes or other tobacco products, can actually uh, increase total testosterone levels. Does this mean that you have to start smoking? No, of course not, because I don't think that this evidence is very compelling. Again, I just cherry-picked about half of the evidence that I could find where um, cigarette smoking indeed increased total testosterone levels. And then when you start doing more research, you see that smoking cessation, testosterone levels go down. But when they start administering something like nicotine gum at non-smokers, testosterone levels also go down. An acute effect of nicotine is that testosterone levels actually go down, but maybe with prolonged exposure, again, body mass index goes down and then total testosterone levels go up. There's no real longitudinal data what happens when you introduce nicotine and follow people for five years because that's probably unethical because nicotine is so addictive and comes uh, with a longer list of side effects, but also potential benefits. 
depending on the route of nicotine administration that you go for. I think that cigarette smoking is uh, very deleterious for the health of your lungs and other organs because you potentially had so much oxidative stress. Uh, cigar smoking is a little bit less, albeit that you know a lot of people still get um, what is it, throat cancer or uh, thyroid cancer or mouth cancer, tongue cancer, etc. With um, you know frequent cigar smoking, so I would recommend everybody out there not to smoke twenty cigars per day, like Andrew Tate suggested, or um, you know insinuated that that's the reason for his total testosterone levels being so high. Um, if I look at Andrew Tate, I would say TRT, but he claims that he's completely natural, but I mean, how many of these influencers are, um, you know, forthcoming with their testosterone replacement therapy or full-blown steroid use, um, you know, on social media? Not too many, unfortunately. Okay, I'll leave it here, guys. Food for thoughts. I hope you found this interesting. You can find everything that I'm associated with down below in the YouTube description section. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Vigor Steve, a cigar smoking aficionado, front of advice for the Vigorous crew. I mean, imagine if you could look like that just by smoking some cigars every single day. I mean, I can't stop flexing. Right? The last time I had a cigar was about two weeks ago. Let's see what happens if I abstain from cigars for another two months. Maybe I go completely catabolic if I'm missing out on the anabolic tobacco replacement therapy. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.